we've all heard about balanced budget amendments. We should pass a constitutional amendment requiring the government to balance its budget, meaning that it would have to live off the taxes it collects or any other income that it might make. Well, that sounds like a wonderful thing, but is it a good thing? Well, those who argue for it say, if the government would balance its budget, then we're not going to have the debt. and Debt's a bad thing. And it would force government to keep its spending under control because that spending is causing us to have to print money and have debt and it affects the growth of the economy. Then there's the other side that says, no, a little bit of deficit is not a bad thing. After all, uh, we all borrow, right? We borrow money to buy a house or we borrow money to buy a car provide you have education. So if the government borrows, as long as it has an income stream and can pay back that debt, what's the problem with borrowing? It allows us to have more benefits today and do good things today rather than put it off. How big is that budget? And where is the money going? So if we break down the budget, we can see that a tiny, tiny portion of the federal budget is actually spent to run the government. A very small percentage. What's the next big chunk? Well, the next big chunk is the military. Military spending is quite enormous. And then all the rest of it, which is the largest part, is for entitlements. Now, these entitlements are things like Social Security and Medicare and welfare. So these entitlements are what go to people as basically a form of income to supplement either their lack of income or supplement their income in their retirement. Now that money, at least the, Medi the Medicare and the Social Security, is supposed to be funded by dollars being collected out of people's paychecks. So if you, were, you are paying for the people today who are retired and the next generation will help pay for yours and so forth. And that's supposed to be equal to that so that it's not really part of the government debt. So then if that's true, then there would just be the welfare portion, the military, and the portion that is being spent on government operations. And where we generally see the cuts coming is in the government operations portion. Well, it's so small that even if you were to cut it to zero, it wouldn't eliminate the deficit. Still, the government does have a lot of waste, but they have cut it back quite a bit. Well, then there's the question of the military. Can we reduce the military portion? Well, we certainly could. How far do we want to take it? So one thought is we live in a different world where warfare is no longer really about boots on the ground. So why do we need 2 million soldiers when in fact the wars are mostly fought until the cleanup portion with cruise missiles or tactical nuclear weapons? So then the question is why not let the military start reducing its size in terms of personnel and build more uh, technology to replace them because we don't live in an era where we need that many soldiers and just have our special forces. Well, that's an interesting question and maybe it's time that we did that because there's a lot of other expenses that are uh, part of the military expense that goes on and on for the rest of their lives. As far as Social Security is concerned, we know that we're going to have an enormous problem in the future as more and more people retire relative to the number of people working. Uh, we're just not going to be able to provide the benefits. So we've been seeing an increase in the age. So it was originally 65 and now it's 66. And by the time you students become eligible, it'll probably be 70. Could even go up from there before you can start receiving the benefits. So if we look back to 1936, when they implemented this, um, the average life expectancy in the United States was 66. That meant on the average, an American was, would on the average receive social security benefits for one year. And that's all. And it was interesting because they actually required you to retire at 65. You were not allowed to work. You would be fined if you went out and got a job. So at 65, they gave you a gold watch or whatever. You walked away from your company and that's it. No more pay. 
go on Social Security. Of course, that had to go away. As people got older and older and they could continue to work, it just didn't make sense to have people sitting around. So now you could continue to work at up to any age. But we've gone up from 66 in 1936 to in mid-70s now. And so we have people working on the average for 10 years longer uh, than when they retire at, at 65. And that's a lot of years to be paying Social Security. Or you could be like my father-in-law at 95, still getting a Social Security check. Well, it has to be reformed. And that reform uh, could be the elimination of the program for future generations, but you can't take the people on it now off. It could mean raising the age like they're doing. And um, all of these things, I think, are going to have to be addressed in the future. The Medicare is the single biggest problem because it's growing so rapidly. And what's happening is we're keeping people alive longer, but they also have more illnesses and more people need to be treated for cancers or heart disease and things like that. And the older people are the ones who are having the bigger expenses. So we have to try to come up with some way to address Medicare and Social Security and welfare before we're going to be able to go very far in terms of balancing the budget. But you can't just say, we're going to balance the budget, because what are you going to do? Tell all these people, I'm sorry, your insurance is now gone, or your retirement is now gone, 